Your body loves to break down glucose to get energy and so it probably comes as no surprise then that your body is going to want to have a ready supply of glucose. The whole question is how does it do it? I.e. how does your body actually store this glucose? Well, I want to tell you immediately that your body definitely does not store glucose as individual molecules of glucose. And instead, what it does is it bonds a load of these glucose molecules together, i.e. what your body does is it makes big polymers of glucose. This big polymer of glucose has a name, and that name is glycogen. So glycogen is your body's ready supply of glucose and it comes in the form of a big polymer. I like to divide my study of glycogen into three main headings and they are making, breaking and regulating. So the making of glycogen has a special word for it and this word is glycogenesis. This part of the word, genesis, means the making of, and glyco obviously comes from the word glycogen. So glycogenesis is the process by which this big polymer of glucose is brought into existence. Now, when do you do glycogenesis? Well, if we just think about it for a second, you're going to be storing glucose when you have lots of glucose to spare. And you have lots of glucose to spare just after you've eaten. So we engage in the process of glycogenesis after meals. The next thing is the breaking down of this big polymer of glucose and there is another, sp uh, not spancy, fancy or special term for this process or set of reactions and that name is, that term is called glycogenolysis. So lysis means the breaking down of and glycogen obviously means glycogen. So glycogenolysis is the process by which glycogen gets degraded. So when do we engage in glycogenolysis? Well, the key idea here is that the glucose that is coming in from your diet arrives irregularly and you would much prefer a rather constant supply of glucose, especially because the brain virtually only uses glucose as its energy fuel. So you're going to be engaging in glycogenolysis between meals when there's, new, when there's no glucose coming in and also when you're asleep. Now there's another time when we engage in glycogenolysis and that is when we suddenly start doing exercise. And the reason for this is that the energy that you can get from your stores of glu glucose is much more quickly accessed than the energy that you can get from breaking down fat. So that's why we do glycogenolysis when we suddenly start to exercise. Now the last topic that I'm going to be looking at is regulation of the whole shebang. And all I can say now is that this is going to take a bit of time. Regulation of glycogen metabolism is no laughing matter, so just to prepare you for that. Um, Anyway, moving on, I want to show you a picture of glycogen, but before I show you a picture of glycogen, let me stress that this is a fiction. I'm showing you a 2D slice sort of thing of the glycogen molecule, and glycogen is indeed a 3D molecule. It's big, it's 3D, what can I say? I'm showing you a 2D slice, and what's more, this 2D slice that I'm showing you is highly fictionalized. Anyway, let me show it to you regardless. Here are your glucose monomers, all bonded together. And here are some more, and here are some more. Now, if you've studied proteins before, which I imagine you have, you will immediately recognize that this thing in the middle is indeed not made out of glucose molecules and is rather a protein. So I kind of lied when I said that the glycogen was made out of glucose. It is made out of glucose, but it also has a big protein in the middle, and that protein is called glycogenin. 
Let me actually just add that to our spider diagram. Glycogen is a big polymer of glucose, but it has a protein in the middle called glycogenin. So let us inspect our glycogen molecule a little bit closer. Let me zoom in here. How do I do that? There we are. So here we are. Now, as you can see, most of the glucose monomers are bonded together in a linear way. But then every 8 to 10 residues or so, 8 to 10 monomers shall I say, for the moment, you have a branch. And because of this branching, you're going to have two types of bond within the glycogen molecule. You have the type of bond that I'm colouring in now in green, which bonds glucose monomers together in a linear way. But then you have these other types of bonds which make new branches, which I've just coloured in there in red. So these two types of bonds have names, and these names are a bit of a mouthful, but I'm going to tell you them nevertheless because you need to know them. They are alpha 1 4 glycosidic bonds and as you can imagine these bonds account for the vast majority of bonds within the glycogen molecule about 90 percent and then you have the bonds which make new branches and they are called alpha 1 6 glycosidic bonds now i'm not going to tell you any more about these bonds for the moment i'm going to go into more detail about them in the next video so let me just leave it at that because there's a few things I want to tell you before um, before I end this video. And they are that, if you think about it, a glucose monomer is only a glucose molecule in isolation. And what we have here are a load of glucose molecules bonded together. So it's not really correct that we call them glucose monomers. So instead, I'm going to use the technically correct term, which is glucosyl residue. So here are four glucosyl residues and here is another two glucosyl residues and here's another three glucosyl residues. I'm sure you get the idea. The next thing I want to tell you is that we have a special word for the glucosyl residue which is at the end of a chain of glucosyl residues. In other words I'm talking about this glucosyl residue and this one and this one and this one and this one etc. These glucosal residues are called the non-reducing ends. And again, the details of this term I am going to go through in the next video. So there's one final thing I want to tell you in this video, and that is uh, a little bit of jargon. And the jargon is the word granule. We use the word granule to describe this whole molecule made up of all these glucosal residues with the glycogenin protein in the middle. And just to be 100% clear, these granules of glycogen are found in the cytosol of the cell. So with that, I leave you. And in the next video, I'm going to start going through the details of everything I went through in this video. Um, and then we are going to get cracking on glycogenolysis.